Black WNSG, Towson, Baltimore, and Baltimore Positive. You guys know I'm stretching out beyond sports, but I tell you what, I got an email early in the week from my old pal Joe Favorito, and it had a whole bunch of different things in it at the same time, and I'm thinking, well, it's All-Star Game week. I mean, I've been to 15, 20 All-Star Games. I saw a lot of celebrities. One of them was Drew Carey in Cleveland back in 1997. And it was about Stratomatic Baseball. And I'm thinking, my God, the hours that I spent on Stratomatic Baseball as a child, as an adolescent with leagues and fun and all that stuff. And I said, they're still playing Stratomatic. And then it said Slim Jim Phantom and Drew Carey are going to be playing Stratomatic Baseball. And I said, well, I got to get Slim Jim on. So I threw a note out. Next thing you know, it's a straight cat strut, sexy and 17, all that good, rock around, all that stuff from all those years ago. I get an opportunity to talk a little baseball and rock and roll. I interviewed Setzer like 30 years ago, Slim Jim. Welcome in. How are you, my friend? I'm doing fine, buddy. Man, you've been to more All-Star games than me by a mile. That's excellent. I haven't been lately. <laughs> haven't been. I covered them all in the 90s at the turn of the century, and maybe the last 10, 12 years, I've only been to a handful. We had it in Washington a couple years ago, uh, and uh-huh. that was awesome. So my wife my wife always said to me, you take me everywhere. She wanted to go to an all-star game. So two years ago this week, we did it. Obviously, you're a big baseball fan, man. You're, you're at Sirius XM. You, you, you have a fantasy thing. Give I know Drew Carey's a baseball fan, but give me a little background on your baseball thing, because like I was unaware of this, or I would have been bugging you like 30 years ago to come on the radio show, Jim. Oh, <laughs> oh well, I, I, baseball's been part of my you know, my life since I was, ever since I can really remember. Those are the two things I always liked. It, um, it was baseball and rock and roll, and I kind of thought I could make a living playing rock and roll baseball. I knew I was <laughs> better to be a fan. Um, I have always followed it. Oh, as a kid, I was always a box score nerd and um any uh, baseball cards newspaper clippings like anything uh to do with it and we played stratomatic in the 70s and i didn't even really know it was still around myself it was such an ancient thing where did you roll the dice did you roll them in the top of the box the way we did or i mean or did you have like a special did you have a strat area because strat was like a religion when you're a 12 year old boy with baseball cards (laughs) right I'm trying. I I can't quite remember. There, it was on the board. I think, or maybe in the top of the box. Yeah, um, and maybe the um, the the chart you'd set up so it was like a backstop, so the dice wouldn't roll off the you know out of the box or something. I, I can't quite remember to be honest. But I knew like, some guys that knew how there. to roll sevens to get you know to get home runs out of Eddie Murray and stuff. Believe me. <laughs> Believe me. Yeah, I don't know. I I. I played with my wife recently in, uh, in the uh, the old timer sets, and uh, she said, "Well, what am I supposed to roll?" I said, "Well, if you roll an eight with the dice and a you know a two with the black one, you'll you know get home." Okay, <laughs> she would ask me what she and then she would roll it. So I said, "Too bad Vegas is shut down right now. I didn't know you had this talent of um, <laughs> dice control." But um, were you Yankees or Mets? It. Which were you? I'm a Yankees guy. You're Yankees guy. Uh, I technically grew up closer to the Mets, but I was such a, a geek for box scores and records and you know stats that uh, that the history of the Yankees really appealed to me. And I would you know want to name the 27 Yankees in alphabetical order and you know things like that. So well, I when was, I bought Strat, I was, they would have a 27 Yankees set, like it was the extra set in the in the box. You know, they would give you a couple right. of classic. They would give you like the 61 Giants, so you'd have McCovey and Marish. You know, exactly. like there was a couple of those type of things when I bought Strat. But so Strat in 2020, what what when I saw this, I'm like. How are you playing Stratomatic with Drew Carey? Like, are you rolling dice? What, what are you doing? Is he right. well, spinning the wheel? Like, <laughs> like the showcase they've showdown. Been playing all the, they've, they've been having it all these years. When I had it in the 70s, um, you could order special sets and get, like you said, the 61 Giants or, or the Whiz Kids or the Gas House Gang or the 27 Yankees. And all. You could order those like special, and they would come. Like, um, now... They have it online, and every player ever is available. And I didn't even know they still made it. So I ordered the box game um, maybe in February or January, before we knew what was going on in the world. And I just, just to have, because my father lost mine when he moved. It was in his garage kind of thing. You want to get physical with it. I mean, it's about touching the dice. It's about touching the cards. It's like having it and seeing what it looked like. It was a little bit, the dice are a little bit smaller. I think that they used to be like real, like, 
Vegas kind of style, big dice, you know, now they seem to be little, but it's, you know, the cards are a little thinner, but it's still exactly the same, brought back a lot of positive memories, and so, um, and the games go pretty quickly if you want to, so. Um, is there basic and advanced still? Is there what? There used to be a basic and an advanced. They were like, a, yeah, the, the, the back of the cards strong. were for like for the kids that were good at algebra, for me. You know what I mean? Yeah. We played now basic. there's ones, there's weather conditions, there's ballpark. We never got that crazy. It's now it's oh, really barometric uh, pressure of the uh, humidity of the, you know, like it's incredible. Have they figured out the shift yet? <laughs> uh, yeah, probably. I, I, I don't even bother with that. So um, just by... Um, Staying in touch with some pals. Drew's an old pal of mine. I've known since really the late '80s, early '90s, I guess. And um, we always stay in touch. And there's a few people that we we've, we've done fantasy baseball since the '90s. Started out um, the first time I did it was with Johnny Ramone and um, Eddie Vedder, Vincent Gallo, just to name drop, you know. And we used to um, another. I've guy heard of in them. The league, <laughs> another guy in the league was a big record executive back then, and. Um, we used to fax. We used to write the lineup out by hand and fax it to the office, to his office, and he had a staff, people that worked at the record company, and then they would input the data. To there was a site that was there was I think there was only one site from the back of Baseball Weekly magazine that you have to that the uh, the commissioner of each league would have to. So somehow they used you know everybody used a little bit of what they knew, but. People being on the road, people making movies, people leading their lives. Nobody missed a day ever. A daily thing that you have to fact your lineup in. So somehow everyone did it. And then in advance, of course, we all do Yahoo and ESPN leagues. And used to be the league through MLB.com that now I think just folded into one of the Yahoo leagues. But so when the more you talk to people, you more find out that there's other guys and gals and people that do the same thing. I can't believe it. You remember Stratomatic? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... Then we found out that uh, they have a, an online version of it, and and you can mix any player with any team. So like it, it doesn't necessarily have to be the twenty seven Yankees against the sixty nine Mets. It doesn't have to be that. It could be any player of anything. So it's you can do a draft, but an auto draft's a little easier for twenty four guys. We have two leagues, one with twelve, one with twenty four. So just we called up a bunch of our pals, Drew, Drew's brother, who I got to say takes all the credit. He's the commissioner. Um, so you can have Christy Matthew Swan and uh, Junior on your team. Wow! And you could have Bud Harrelson as your backup shortstop to um, to um, Phil Rizzuto. You know, <laughs> it's, uh, you can really do anything. So we found out that there's an online version of that. So we um, you don't roll the dice. Uh, the computer plays the games, and you get the results. So, but you have to set the lineup every day. Well, I'm on the website so, right now, and this is so. When it came across earlier in the week, and I'm like, "Well, it'd be nice if Slim Jim calls in and we we talk about it or whatever, or Drew Carey, whomever." But I'm just happy that there's still Stratomatic. You know, so many things I of my believe. youth are gone, rock and roll, exactly. and different stuff. You know, I can't exactly. go to a concert right now, Slim Jim. You can't exactly. have one, right? Exactly. So. We just thought there was the board game and the old, uh, and now and now they have the fantasy league. Like I said, you can mix and match players from the 1800s to uh, to uh, to modern day players. But besides that, which we didn't know until last week when they when we talked about this all star game a few weeks ago when they got in touch, is that they the Stratomatic people have been playing the 2020 season out as if just following the schedule. So when it came to the All-Star game break, which is now, the stats are as if everything had been uh, been, been played normally. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking so at the player the, batting stats here so and the pitcher stats through the week. So they kind of gave us the team, which was good. They gave you, and then you set the lineup, of course, but they gave you the starters as voted, and they did a simulated fan vote to get the extra few players in. And uh, they, they, it's all, and really what we've learned from Stratomatic, that if you play it out, it does come true. All the percentages. I tried to explain this to my wife, really that it was sort of like nerdy, statistical. Become. I said there was a guy in New York 50 years ago that came up with these nerdy, statistical things, and he created these cards with Mickey Mantle and Roger Maris and stuff on it, yeah. and we went nuts for it, you know, because it was yeah. like, we, there was, we had, three te- we had three channels on TV, 
Jim. You know this, right? I mean, sure. there's no cable TV. This is what we did. We collected baseball yeah. cards. We waited for the game to start. We played games during the day. And in the offseason, we played Strat. That's what we did. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I see here, uh, in, in, in Mookie Betts is like having a good a year for the Dodgers. <laughs> having a great year, yeah. Um, but it was a connection to the players because when you're that young, everything is a bit mythical. Baseball in general, rock and roll stars. You don't think of these, you know, Mickey Mantle's being a real person. Who was or, your guy, you know, though? You were born like 61. Like, who? So the Yankees really stunk. Like, the Mets were in the World Series when you were 12, and then Reggie came, right? So you had a yeah. really, as you were putting together your rock and roll vibe in the late 70s, you got some good baseball in the Bronx. It was funny because a few of my favorite players were former Oakland A's who came over. Hunter, Reggie, uh, they were like two of my favorite players, and they were. Oakland guys who could, Mr. Steinbrenner brought, brought to New York. But it was a connection. Like, you never thought that you could, like, I'm going to start Steve Carlton today. I remember that was the first year that we had it, when, like, the first couple draft picks were uh, Well, the Steve weird Carlton thing is America and, never and, played uh, national. So, like, to have Steve Carlton pitch to Reggie Jackson, that never happened. So, in yeah, Strat, exactly. you could make that happen. Yeah. So, like, you felt like you would... Like, it was a connection to people or things. That you, I mean, I'd never been to Seattle. I'd never been to, you know, Cleveland. <laughs> you know, so, like, it was somehow a connection to um, uh, more than television. Or, you know, like, it felt like you really, like, you know, I, can, I, I owned Willie Stargell and Steve Carlton, and I could start these guys today if I want. And um, we played for years with some guys in our neighborhood. Um, and, and, I don't think I'd recognize these people as adults, but I remember the guys from the neighborhood that were into it. And then to find out that there was now later in life that uh, there there was a lot of people into it, and that they've kept the company going all these years. And Stratomatic is from Long Island. It's from very close to where we grew up, the Stray Cats, it's like right up there on the North Shore of Long Island. We're from the South Shore, but in the big scheme of things, it's not that far away. But um, so to find out that it still existed, and then we made a connection with them. And when we they found out that it was Drew and myself and in our fantasy league is Mike Mills from REM, Neil Geraldo, uh, some of Drew's big comic friends, Greg Proops, just some like few quite famous people, right? The, the Stratomatic people couldn't believe it. They they they're those guys that they don't know that it likes it. <laughs> they're, they're, they're those guys that still don't know. They're still the old guys that. Um, so they got in touch. And asked if Drew and I would manage at the All Star teams, and they were going to play out a virtual game. And they had a uh, they had a pro from one of the teams, uh, the announcer Seth Everett, and he's worked for a bunch of the teams, like a play by play guy. And and the computer plays out the game and managed it and made the changes, the pitching changes and pinch hitting, and uh, it's. So it was an all-star game, so a bit of the challenge was just that you want to get as many people in as possible. And the graphic looks like an Atari game from the 80s. <laughs> kind of cool. Um, so it's still got that old-school vibe to it. But it's just one of those things that's still there. It's incredible. And they've kept up with it because the game takes 45 minutes. It's really not too bad. So in, in our league, uh, everyone plays – three games a day, and then you get the results in the morning, and everyone checks it first. So it's better than you know, checking the newspaper first and seeing some... I have <laughs> some a feeling there's more than bragging rights at stake here. I'll be upset here, about Stratomatic before I'm upset about the real news, you know. Um, so it's, um, it's, it's a cool thing, and like the more people you talk to, the more you'll find out that, 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 that it was a big thing, and then everyone likes it. Just because you're a rock and roll, it doesn't mean you didn't like baseball. Well, and that's the, the, the shtick of my, um, uh, my show on um, Erie Sex and Fantasy Sports, is that it's not like that. It doesn't have to be like, if you're the punk rock guy, you can't like baseball. And if you're the guy that was on the football team, you can't like rock and roll. It's like, it's not like that. Well, baseball's for no. everybody. I mean, over my 50 exactly. years, and you know, my cousin's in the baseball hall of fame. So it comes to me naturally that I, I say my name and they're like, oh, you're related to Luis. And yeah. So, I mean, I've been getting that my whole life as well. But baseball and where we are right now, COVID, right? I mean, two months ago, we're fighting over right. money, trying to get back on the field. Now they're going to get back on the field. Are they going to get back on the field? How much are people going to miss it? Is 60 games a real? 
real season. Uh, Jim, my team sucks, right? I mean, you, you know, we we were going to lose. I, I say the only way they're going to avoid 100 losses was to have a plague, literally, uh, for the Orioles this year. So they're going to play 60. <laughs> um, are, are you one that's sort of glued to all of this on a night-by-night basis? I mean, I'm just assuming the Yankees are going to win because the Red Sox stink, right? right? Well, I, I, I am because I do the radio show, and that's um, I do it with Kyle Elfrink, who's um, – uh, who's out of San Francisco, who's been doing fantasy sports expertise involved in radio and newspaper journalist for, for, for years. And they partnered me with him and we do a show that was supposed to be when with them, when they hired us to do the show about the fantasy season, tips and tricks and, you know, news. And we've somehow made a show for four months without, you know, just talking about the kind of stuff we're talking about now. Yesterday we talked about when Leo Rocha was on the Munsters and when Don Drysdale was on the Brady <laughs> Bunch. And, you know, he just peppered with some, you know, Aaron Judge says he's going to play now. It was Wes Parker, the- I think. When was Wes Parker on the Brady Bunch? I think it was Wes Parker. Uh, no, uh, no, it was Don Drysdale. Wes Parker did appear in the episode of the Munsters when Leo Rocha, they wanted to sign Herman. Wes Parker was in that episode. Wes Parker might have been on the Brady Bunch, too, but the one that I mentioned was when Don Drive. I'm looking it up because I just yeah. want to know. I mean, Wes Parker, yeah. I, he See, may, may have been on both. That's what, we do. that's what our show does. It sends people to check these things out immediately. Everyone who's listening to our show is, like, Googling at the same time. And he I'm appeared in episode all, number 17 of the Brady Bunch, the undergraduate on January 23rd, 1970, okay. as a boyfriend of Greg May- Brady's math teacher. So there you had. And, and, uh-huh. and there you go. And what about the Don, uh, the Don Drysdale episode? Don Drysdale episode of Brady Bunch? I don't know. Yeah. Hold on. I, well, I mean, I, 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 everybody remembers the Joe Namath one, right? Yeah, but we were doing baseball yesterday. Yeah, exactly. All right. All right. Well, I'm trying to think. Baseball Bunch, did that come up? Johnny Bench, did, that, did any of that stuff yeah, make it or that, no? Yeah, that was in there when Reggie Jackson was on different strokes. I remembered that one and pulled that one up. There, were, there was a whole bunch of them. But my point is that we find stuff to talk about even without the season. So, um, and then we just did the... Um, I've been doing that for 30 we, years. <laughs> <laughs> we, we had done the Sirius XM sports host draft uh, in March, I think, or even February, during the winter meetings. Uh, and there's guys like this, heavy guys like Steve Phillips is in the league, like guys who really know really what, what they're doing. doing. Yeah, yeah. So Professionals. I had to replace Mancini <laughs> from your neck of the woods. He was my... Uh, my starting first baseman, you know, we had to get rid of him. And um, there's a whole lot of stuff that's making it challenging, so we're trying to look at it that way. But I'm having to keep up on it. Normally, if it was a regular year and this was going on, I don't think I would be paying that, that much attention to it. I, I, I do now to do the research of the show. Jim McDonald is our guest. He is better known as Slim. Jim Phantom, the drummer for the Stray Cats, along with other bands. And, you know, Stratomatic's sort of like rockabilly, right? It's like an old school, but it's never going away, man. You know, it's, it's, that's, that's exactly right. It's a very rockabilly thing. Well, if, for you with music, because we talk baseball, and, I mean, music's what you do. You'd rather talk baseball. Sports is what I do. I'd rather talk music, you know. Um, just where are the Stray Cats? Where are you? I, I get to talk to so many musicians. Uh, I've got, uh, uh, next week, I'm, I'm bringing on uh, Todd Zuckerman from Styx, and uh, JY calls in. So we, we're going to do a little uh, a rock and jock baseball preview that right. you're going to be a little bit exactly. of a part of. You sort of brought that that back for me a little bit in the middle of July where it feels weird to be starting a baseball season. But the music side of all of this is I, I, I guess there's downtime and everybody has hobbies. I mean, Steve Gorman's been a, a sports fan forever, did his own show, yeah. the whole thing, and the Black Crows. I interviewed those guys 30 years ago back when I was the music critic at The Sun. The, the music and sports thing, uh, especially for baseball, I think 30 years ago more people were, I'm worried about baseball's future, that we don't have 22-year-old rockers into baseball the way maybe we would like to, but your music and baseball thing, I guess it comes natural for you, right? That's It's not well, a crazy thing. you have thing. to hope for. I think that's what they thought of when they looked at me uh, in an airport in 1981. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit striking, you know, trying to find the international results of a baseball game in the back of USA Today. So I'd say probably thought the same thing, you know, as where, you know, where are the old guys now? So I think we're worried about the same thing as maybe the, the guy walking past me in the airport thought thought back then so i can't be that guy i have to have the confidence and you know there's always going to be people into it 
That's what I think. You know, so do you love the game as Ramon much as you used to, though? I, I mean, like, uh, there is I a like part it, of this. I, I've yeah. done this every day for 30 years, right? I mean, I've watched my baseball team here go from 4 million people and Cal Ripken and all of that to sure. – we got real problems here with fans and people being interested in it. Um, when I watch the games now, the shifts certainly make the game different. Look what they're doing this year with the relief pitching, what they're doing with the DH. I mean, it's only taken them, what, 48 years? I had John Churros on last week. I was joking. I said, hey, yeah, 48 years. I would have thought the DH would have been in 20 years ago. That They are experimenting, I would say, for being as curmudgeonly and fuddy-duddy and conservative as baseball has been. This is the year where everything's going to be weird, right? Oh, there's going to be the rule changes, the guy at second base and extra innings, and of course, they're trying to do things to make the game go a little bit quicker, I think. That's the ultimate goal. But I think that it's, it's always going to be there. I mean, we talk about this on my show, that it's a, you know, like a bit of a metaphor for the country that after every war, including civil war, I think, you know, baseball's always been there. And it's kind of represented the country in a lot of ways, I think. You know, so uh, it's another opportunity for that to happen. Safe to go in the water, maybe start to get that. Maybe baseball will be the first thing to start. You know, after nine eleven, the Yankees played. You know, so I, I, I think it's always been there. You know, and I think it always will be. So I think I, I, I hold it as a positive thing, but. In the meantime, we've been making records. You know, the Stray Cats toured last uh, the last two summers. Uh, we have a live album that just got announced today. It's out on the 11th of September, and it just got announced today. We recorded um, a few of the key shows of the tour, and it's going to be a nice package, vinyl as well, poster, the whole thing. And so we've been mixing that, and we've been... Um, uh, uh, getting the, all, all the artwork together kind of stuff. So I've been doing that. Uh, my, my wife, Jenny V, is a band called Eagles of Death Metal, and she, she's making records together. And it's all, you do it at home. You do it through file sharing. So you get a lot of people on, we have our friends on the record who might not have been on the record if we weren't doing it this way. So it's, it's a little corny, but you got to make, lemonade out of the lemons you got to keep creating you got to keep keep doing it because if you stay in and be in a bad mood you know you just sunk so we're happy for file sharing and stratomatic <laughs> <laughs> again baseball are the two things that can keep going i i do a radio show for steve van, um, stevie van zandt every sunday it's called rockabilly rave up and every no one at serious has missed a step you've had to change your approach to it you have to do it from your house and upload the files and get a you know get the engineer back in New York to put it together and then it comes out on the show and you record it at home yourself and you have to send the music in about but somehow it hasn't missed a step. I'm looking so. at my ticket stub right now from Hammer Jacks, Saturday, July 18th, 1992, with Stray Cats. Uh, <laughs> it was eight bucks. It was eight bucks in Hammer Jacks. You know what I'm saying? Hammer uh, Jacks. I remember that place. Well, yeah. of course you do. And that's why I'm bringing it up. Uh, you know, because you remember every place uh, from back then. For, for you with the rock and roll thing, standing up, beating on the drums, doing what you've done all these years. When music gets taken away, live music gets taken away from me that I that I couldn't go see your, your guy Eddie Vedder. I was sitting on tickets in four different places. I was sitting on Stones tickets all over the country. I mean, sure. all sorts of bands that that we missed out on, uh, uh, tours, all that stuff. For for you guys and what you do for a living, give me what it's going to mean for you the next time like you go out into a place like Hammerjacks and it's crazy and you get to do what you're pretty much bred to do, which is play rock and roll. Yeah, it's. Uh... It's when that happens. Luckily for someone like the Stray Cats, at this point we 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 do more, um, uh, you know, outdoor kind of things sure. in the summertime. That's what it's been the last few years. Doing nicer things, bigger places, not say like Hammerjacks where you're packed in there. Kind <laughs> of, you know, maybe that might come back slower than an outdoor type thing. I'm not. I don't know exactly. Nobody does, but I do know that for me. Um, it, it is a shame because it might have been the first and the last and first time and the last chance anyone would have had to go see the the Stones or someone like that. I mean, are they really going to do it five years from now? It'd be astonishing if they did, but um, it's astonishing that they were doing it now. So um, I think for that, it's it's a real drag. Besides the 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 nuts and bolts, that's how everyone makes a living. The people on the stage, uh, you know. 
there's a lot of moving parts. And the Stray Cats, in, in comparison to that, is a very small operation. <laughs> We've only got 20 people involved, you know, every day. Someone like that, a tour like that's got 200 people at all times just to get, you know, to get Jumping Jack Flash going. It's, you know, two, 300 people it takes, really, all the time from the minute, you know, 24-7. You know, the minute that stage is done, it's getting broken down and leapfrogged to the other stage is getting built in the next town. It's just beyond how much, uh, how many moving parts there are, like a baseball club. So in that way, um, maybe, um, uh, you know, maybe the top players are okay, but there's all the other ancillary people that really go into making the whole thing happen. And if you want to talk about a club like Hammerjacks, down to the, you know, the guy who cleans up afterwards and the bartenders and the... You know, the parking guy, everything. So, I I feel fortunate that we we did it the past few years. Well, so, we were going to be off this year. Jenny's band was supposed to tour, and we were supposed to tour on our own. It's supposed to be in uh, Germany right now. I just looked at the calendar. <laughs> That's where we where we were supposed to be. And but in the meantime, like I said, we the Shakers have a live album coming out. I do my radio shows every week. My wife uh, and I work on music together, so you just got to find the stuff to do, man. You just got to see it as an opportunity in a funny way. Well, I've really enjoyed our, our visit with you, and it wouldn't be a full visit. You know, I, I, I'm Wikipedia you know, looking you up, and I see, man, you're in a band with Mike Peters. So, so Mike Peters, the yeah. alarm back in, and I, I, I see Neil Giraldo. You were also friends with him. The first time I saw the alarm was opening for Pat Benatar. There you uh, go. Yeah, two, yeah, two of them right there. Yeah, back in 86 <laughs> at the Capitol Center back in the day, and fell in love with the alarm and strength, and, uh, and, and, and he was a survivor, and he started a, a thing called Love, Hope, Strength. And well, my, I did it with them, yeah. Yeah, my, my wife was diagnosed with leukemia back in March of 2014. And within wow. the first two or three days, I had seen that he had been swabbing to save people's lives. And I reached yeah. out to him and Jules. And, uh, and, and my wife had a bone marrow transplant in June of 14 and another bone marrow transplant in December of 15 from the same German donor. And uh, we got a chance to see Mike uh, put an alarm show back together in Miami about a year and a half ago. They happened to be there when we were there. I got to catch up with him and Jules, and uh, Mike's just a really, really survivor and a really, really special human being. And uh, anybody that's in a band with Mike Peters is somebody I should have on the program. I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's um, he's one of my best buddies for forty years. Really, the the, uh, the first time the Stray Cats did a tour, proper tour, was in nineteen eighty of England, and they were the opening act. Wow. Elon. Come on down and meet your Elon. maker. Come on down and make a stand. <laughs> yeah, before that. Did they have bigger hair to you? Because their hair was really big like in 8081, uh, right? This is before they did all that. They, uh, there was the same members, but their band was called Seventeen. Okay. Before they were called the Elon, before they changed their name. It was the same four guys. And, um, I love having you on a show. You're teaching me stuff, bro. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so we just always stay friendly. And, and I did the mountain climbs with them. We did Everest. We did um, oh, Kilimanjaro. We did all that with Mike, my, uh, myself and Mike, and a few of you know. There was a few of us there. Um, so on, I've had you on a there. half an hour. We haven't talked about you climbing Mount Kilimanjaro. Like, oh, yeah, I climbed Kilimanjaro. Okay, that's cool. We moved on. You know, like, I mean, well, that's, that's a big deal, Mike, dude, right? You know if he's helped you as well, then you know the, that that's, you know, he's that kind of guy. He's that rock and roll can save your soul. He really is that guy. And he was that guy when I met him. He's the real deal. Like, he's like the ago, real before, deal. <laughs> before he was ill. Um, before, during, and since. So um, I spoke to him, actually emailed just maybe two days ago. Tell him you did an Esther show in Baltimore and, and give Jules my love and hope that they're healthy and safe and, and uh, hopefully making more beautiful music, man. I mean, there's nothing like it. Yeah, I know show. he's doing something with Duffy is up with the up there and they're doing something so. he was all supposed to be in new york i think at the iridium like in april or me during during covid i had it in my calendars one of the billion things that got blown out of my calendar yeah, yeah. the last six months but hey you guys get together and, and 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 bang on the skins and have him do his thing I, i'd love to support that and certainly my wife and we have a whole support network here of survivors that uh you guys we ever put the band back together and had live we ever get to have good things again jim uh, uh i'd love to you know be a part of that and uh, and, and promote anything well, you guys will on. and we just want we're like steering everyone right now towards um towards patreon slim jim phantoms patreon site because we have a lot of cool stuff 
we've been doing unreleased material and unreleased photographs and and stories and a podcast about all the stuff that we're talking about. Uh, Mike is in it, and you know the, my my association with baseball and the formation of the Stray Cats. We we like started doing this a few months ago, and everyone really digs it. And it's a way that I've been really staying in touch with people more than uh, your your normal so, uh, social media sites. Patreon.com Slim Jim Phantom is really where we've been getting it. You know the message across the history of rock and roll, I, all in one place. What you're telling me, right? Basically, ig- exactly right. That's for that's that's kind of me where I'm steering everybody because it's where I can get the most contact with everyone. Well, my wife would tell you I either have my Rush old school belt buckle from 1979 or my Led Zeppelin, <laughs> uh, you know, with the diving swan throwback. You know, I'm one of those ones that look like the, the roller skating rink with all the disco looking things. So I wear that as like yeah. a throwback thing because I don't have any tattoos or anything cool like that. I am getting longer hair, bro. I mean, I'm I'm working on some rockabilly. <laughs> I haven't had a haircut in six months. So I'm working. I'm working on my, uh, my my bouffant here. But hey, man, a, a pleasure, my brother. I mean, I've, my I've, I've seen you play and I didn't know you were a Stratomatic guy. Um, oh, and yeah. a, an absolute pleasure. We'll be listening for you on Sirius. We'll be checking out the podcast, the Pantheon podcast. And uh, by all means, I want to see you and Lee and, uh, and, and Setzer get back here and, uh, and, and bring the heat. Rock this town when you get in here, all right? Thanks. And now Luis was your uncle. I asked him about that. Cousin, cousin, he, cousin. My dad's first cousin. cousin. Yeah, absolutely. And I saw your name and they said that you weren't related. And I no, thought that's I such am. an odd name. All day. I could yeah. have swore. And Baltimore connection and all that. That was so... So that went a long way with me because I knew it. I somehow had a feeling. I learned a lot about that when Frank Robinson died last year. You know, you'd start to learn your own history about your family. My father, yeah. my father couldn't bring his family to get a little political. My father, in 1964, Bill Vec was like not helpful to the right. players, right? Like he he hated Vec. Vec hated him. And you wonder how Frank Robinson and Louis Aparicio wound up with the 66 Orioles. Like, how, why did Cincinnati just give Frank Robinson away? Why did right. why were the why, why were both of those teams so quick to get rid of Hall? Hall of Fame baseball players in their prime when they had a reserve clause. Well, they were both sort of uppity, right? They were they were malcontents. The Reds and the White Sox were talking about. No, Louie and Frank. They wanted out. Yeah, and the Louis only way... From, where did Louie come from? Chicago, Chicago, the White Sox. Yeah, yeah the 59 yeah, right, Go-Go right. Sox. So the only way yeah. you could get out was to be a prick. And you had to make right. yourself miserable, make them miserable to want to get you off the plantation. So right. to be traded away. Steve Carlton was the most miserable member of Augie Bush's yeah. team and was basically sent to Philadelphia as like sort of like the, the you know, Siberia. You know, ah, right. you, you want to you, you, you be a wise guy? We'll send you to Philadelphia. They're going to win 50 games next year. You'll win 27 of them, right? So in right. the 60s, that happened, and Louis uh, came to Baltimore because he wanted to bring his family from Venezuela. I'm the offspring. That's cool. So he got to bring uh, some cousins, and I'm sure some senators and, you know, uh, official people were involved in bringing a baseball player's family, you know, to come to America. So that's how I'm right. here 50 years later. So you learn all this stuff. Ba- baseball. Cool. Paul's yeah. the reason I'm in America, Slim Jim. Yeah. It's true. You know, so. <laughs> Frank Robinson, by the way, was a nice guy. I think he lived in L.A. because I used to see him at a certain deli week. <laughs> and he was always a nice guy. We went up to, I think Johnny Ramone and I went up and just said hello to him. I don't even think we got an autograph. John, Johnny already had his autograph, you know, on 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 8x10. It was kind of pre-selfie world um, a few years back. So, but he he was a very nice man. I remember he would talk to whoever recognized. He was another one he could even believe anyone would recognize him. And we're like, "What are you crazy? That's Mike Robinson." So he seemed like a very nice man. So I, I that makes sense to me that you say that. All right, next time we get together, we'll talk about the life of Johnny Ramone, all the Ramones, and what they mean to you Robinson. Got it. But I'm going to do that with Mike Maceros next week from the Smithereens. So hey, appreciate okay. you, man. Thanks for coming on, brother. I appreciate it. Thank thank you very uh, much. You talk to Sukerman. He's incredible, man. I watch his stuff on you know like. He's one of those guys. My son's a drummer, and I'm a drummer. We call each other. Did you see that last one that he did? He's oh. one of those beyond guys. Well, I'll he, let him know he that, that really he's got a fan club in Slim Jim. That's cool, man. All the drummers. He can see, really play. Yeah, as a rock and roll guy, we think all oh, you just hang out together. I mean, so, you know, and you don't. Well, but... a lot of times you do, you know, but you don't know everybody, you know. <laughs> you know some. I had a hot dog with Clem Burke one time at Pink's in L.A., so I know somebody. You know, I, I, <laughs> there you I, go. A few drummers. Hey, man, a pleasure to have you on, Slim Jim. Take care you of yourself, it. all right? 
Nice one. Slim Thanks, Jim Anna. Phantom, Bye-bye. my man from the uh, Stray Cats doing the strut, and uh, they'll be rocking this town once they get it going. He's rocking the Stratomatic board right now, rocking the dice, uh, along with Drew Carey. They did a, a Stratomatic All-Star event last Tuesday night. Uh, you can learn more at Stratomatic.com. If I have to explain what Stratomatic is to you, like I did to my wife the other night, it means that you should discover it for yourself because they're not playing baseball right now, and you can go play Stratomatic. So go roll the dice. I'd sell my soul for a George Brett 1980 Stratomatic card right now. I could blow on the dice. Give me a 2-7 bomb at Royal Stadium for George Brett. Nasty at WNST.net, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Snapchat, Instagram. Talking to rock stars, drummers. I'm going to unload Slim Jim's uh, Rolodex. Make him get Neil Giraldo on here. We'll talk about the Anaheim Angels. Mike Trout. We are... Com. We're local. We're WNST.net, AM 1570. Towson, Baltimore. We never stop talking. Rock and roll with rock and roll legends in Baltimore Positive.